Hey guys, Crew of Blind Wave here, and I'm Shane. Rick. I'm Kevin. Peaky Blinders, Season 2, Episode 2. Last time, a lot of stuff happened. We lost a character in the beginning. Yeah. I found out about that. Um, someone's told me that uh, the guy got contracted to another series, just gonna come back. So they pretty much killed him off. I see. But it's shitty, because they probably had more of an idea for his character. I feel like they did. I would have just said, like, oh, well, he's off doing communist stuff. Maybe, maybe he'll be, be back, the, maybe he won't. Yeah, that would be the easiest thing. But then to not be able to show it at all through that whole season, it would have been a bit upsetting, probably. To ah. just have other characters say, oh, yeah, he's he's off in Russia. Or, or maybe. Game of Thrones, like you had like a whole season without Bran. Yeah. That's a really huge ensemble. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. books where they don't, there's books in the Game of Thrones. Uh, where they don't even mention a character sometimes in like a whole book, so I don't know if you can do that for this. Well, they're done mentioning him now. Yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> so their their pub got blown up, and it was it was the IRA, wasn't it? Making making uh, trying to make Tommy do stuff for them. Yes, because he was chosen. He we was. don't know what for yet. Yeah, he was... had to kill that blacksmith. He just oh, went yeah. in, he shot just... him. Yeah. Pew. Dead. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite characters back, too. Sam Neill. Yes. Inspector Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally thinking who that was for a second. He has a uh, wolf cane now. Yeah. Yeah. He's leveled he's, up in badassery. He's with the SIS. Mm -hmm. The so, Irish Division. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Irish desk of the Secret Intelligence Service. Mm -hmm. Tommy. Shut up! <laughs> uh, Shut up! His um, eyes may be a little too big for his stomach. Tried to go to London and move in on Sabini's yeah. territory. Yeah, and they got their ass. Well, they beat some ass, but then they got their ass. Then he almost got killed after that. And he yeah. was saved by Sam Neill. <laughs> he was. Mm -hmm. Now he But owns only him. because Sam Neill needs him. And they so. had a cool thing about paying for love. You know, we hate people. The only love we get, we, the only love that you and I have, we have to pay for. Well, that was that last was, season. Yeah, the one before. But Why the hell did I write that for last episode? Mm -hmm. Well, because was it so great? I because brought Tommy, it up and I wrote down again. <laughs> because Tommy was was uh, hanging out with the oh, prostitute. Yeah. Stark. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Lizzie it was Sterling. A, it was a reoccurring theme. Yeah, okay. Sterling. All right. Sterling. Lizzie Sterling. Oh yeah, and uh, his she uh, he upgraded her to uh, an employee, right? Yeah, that's so, what I've written down. Yeah. So, okay. That's what she because she works for him now as a uh, sure it's secretary. Sterling because that's Lindsay Sterling is the violinist. That would that be was, funny. I thought it was Lizzie Stark. I, I could be totally wrong. I mean, they're both ST Oh, names. you're right. I have Stark written down for this episode and then Sterling written <laughs> okay. down for this one. So uh, okay. You're probably right. Is it, so it's Stark? Yeah, yeah Stark. Lizzie Stark. <laughs> Damn. Ah. Damn, dude. I hope that goes okay. It looked like it was going okay. Yeah, I mean... He didn't turn away. He opened the door. He 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 seeked her out. Yep. And they're gonna need someone to replace Arthur. So <sighs> I don't want, I don't want him to get involved in the van. I don't want him to get involved in the family business like that. Hopefully, honestly, he probably had a pretty good life out of the country. Definitely compared to uh, Anna, who was older and couldn't forget her old home and yeah, got shipped to settle. fucking Australia. Died of spring disease. What the hell spring is that? Spring fever. Spring fever. What is that? Yeah. That's what I get every time I go outside in the sun. It's different than what they have in Bambi, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, joint swelling, loose teeth, and poor healing wounds. Hmm. Uh, lack of vitamin C. That's what some people think. So they went over there had a bunch of fucking white bread and nothing else. They got the scurvy. Grace is married to a banker in Poughkeepsie. So, a couple years later she's married to a... didn't give a shit. Yeah, he never came. Now she's got to move on. So I wonder if she wrote Campbell as well, or if he found out through his network. He probably found out through his network. Maybe. Yeah, I don't imagine her writing him. I mean, he well, is I know a, I shot you, but... He is a desk of, of secret intelligence. Yeah. Sure. I mean, they were close for a long time, though. Yeah. But yeah, you're probably right. I wonder what the fuck that letter was. Damn it. Never gonna know? We got a flashback. Even the Dark Knight, we found out, you know, what the letter meant. Oh. Oh. Just tweet Never that actress. Back. What? Just tweet that actress. She didn't write the letter. <laughs> she probably did. She That's the camp. most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> Andy Day Lewis would write the letter. Exactly. Tom Hardy is here, so we got two Batman Solomon. Solomon. 
Yeah. Solomons. Solomons. Mr. Solomons. We have two yeah. Batman Dark Knight trilogy veteran villains here. That's so cool. He was talking about cutting that cabinet in half. I was like, what? He's going to see who the real mother is? Yeah, right. But no. But yeah, Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. Dude, he, it's Crazy. so cool to have him. I wonder how much of a presence he has on the show. I imagine he's the new um, Kimber. They will probably have about as much presence as he did. I don't know. I feel like the Sabinis are more the Kimber. Okay. Or at least the style of how they handle things. Yeah. You know, Billy Kimber would just blow up and just fucking want to kill everybody. And his bookie was like, <laughs> now, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just wait. <laughs> you could make more money. Yeah. And for much less effort. They had a dynamic like that as well, Sabini and his man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Solomon's, just, like, as soon as he put that gun away and said, well, what, what, what kind of deal you want to make, I felt like he was a different kind of character. Yeah. You got to know what kind of man you're dealing with. Yeah. But, yeah, one thing about rewinding, uh, Tommy knows that Grace shot him in the leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love how his, his war or lack of war record keeps coming up. Yeah. You know, even with Churchill. Yeah. It's like, you know, what they call him? Private, no, Private Campbell. Major. Major Campbell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so he wanted help exporting goods from, from the government, or like, you know. He well, he needs, a, he needs a stamp. A stamp of yeah, approval. Yeah, he wanted an international trading license, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. for finished goods, whatever that might happen to be. Churchill's I imagine old. it's for the Solomons, right? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, so he can work a deal to trade the booze. Yeah, because the Sabinis are shutting down every place in town that's taking it. They can't shut so, down Russia and everywhere else they mention. Yeah, no. So, yeah, that's a big, and big the, boom. Uh, Malay Peninsula and... Monkey Island. But I guess Churchill and Campbell, by extension, wants Tommy to assassinate someone for the crown. Yeah. Yeah, so they still plan on hanging him? Because now I feel like, because they didn't mention this episode, but last episode they made it sound like that's what they would do. But well, at that's, the time, what, that's what happened to the to well, the last guy yeah, that he had which, worked for him. Yeah, Campbell but, said that like Tommy's been he was born born for a hanging. Yeah. yeah, but I, I imagine. But they, Churchill didn't know who he was at the at the time. Does it matter? I wonder. I mean, he knew who he was because of the investigation with the guns before. Yeah, but he didn't know he was like a. Did he know he was a war hero and everything? I don't think so. It didn't seem like Probably it. Probably not. Yeah. But I don't know that he cares. Campbell had dossiers on all the Shelby boys. Yeah, that doesn't mean Churchill was yeah took the time to read him or whatever no but he mentioned in the train where they met the first time you know distinguished war record and stuff like that but i don't think churchill really read into it a who lot. on earth do they want him to assassinate i would imagine since it involves campbell it must be someone in the irish yeah i wish we knew who that guy was the blacksmith from last episode so i mean he he had to have been like contact or something like that but that was for the irish mm -hmm. that was for the irish yeah. yeah so campbell's wanting him to get in deep with the irish because they're blackmailing Tommy. Right. And that's probably why they contacted him for that, because he killed for the IRA. Yeah. Or wh whoever they are now. Okay, so when you think of Polly's son, yeah, I, I think she Henry. Could, yeah, Henry. I think, I, I, I think she's acting a little crazy, obviously. I mean... Because like I, I get it, I I, I know I, I, it's been it's been weighing on her mind for it has, but years. like she has to think like well I want this to work out, so I want to do anything I can to make it work out the way I want it to work out. Yeah. So she, you know I figured she but, could wait a little longer to get what she wants. But grasping instead, instead at of, any hope that she might have of seeing him again, you know, yeah. she never thought that it was ever going to happen. You know, she thought they were dead. She's waited 15 years. She can't wait another six months. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how close he is to 18, but it must be decently close. Yeah, hard to say. But he did come. And hopefully, like you said, he doesn't get involved in that world. Or he does. And it all works out fine. Because everything in this kind of world always works out fine. Yeah, I know, right? Nope. Arthur killed him. <laughs> did, yeah, Arthur, He. I didn't know that was a kid. Did you guys? Yeah, he was He was a boy. Probably Alec, about Finn's age. I mean, Alec. I just, he looked just like some bloody dude. I, I couldn't tell how old he was. Yeah, he looked like really skinny. Yeah, I just like some skinny like little his, dude. His, but his I thought Arthur looked skinnier slim. than he did when he was jump roping last oh, season. Oh, he's fucking ripped. Yeah, he's he got looked no like he's, body fat. It looked like he him. had lost some mass since last last year. Maybe a little bit. And actually, I think it's actually a couple years. Like, uh, probably. But he uh, probably worked hard to get to that point during filming, and then through the layoff, you know, through the off season. Yeah. But I really liked his analogy with the barge of like, you know, I can feel the weight slipping. I know it's gonna flip over, but Tip there's the nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And like before Tommy 
took like a tough love kind of approach when he was gonna kill himself the first time seemed to help. This time, I'm not sure it helps that much. It seemed like the drugs maybe stabilized him, but that's probably not a good road for him either. Probably not. I don't no. think it stabilized him. I think it just put him back up on the high. He's gonna crash hard. And yeah. It's not gonna be good for him. Yeah, not a lot of psychiatric help around this time. And they didn't even know a None. lot. Yeah. You know? Like in the 60s and 70s, they thought it was, I mean, it wasn't looked upon like in a way that was, people thought it was bullshit then. Like my, my dad was talking about it. Yeah, in the 70s, people thought it was stupid. Like, cause they talk, because they had one in the military, it was Vietnam, and no one's like, everyone thought it, just, it was bullshit. It's interesting, because they had like post-traumatic stress disorder. They knew kind of what it was in the Homeric myths. Like, people have known soldiers get fucked up in the head for a long time. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, every every story that ever was where, you know, someone goes away to war and comes back, you know, they're never the same person. You know, that's always the thing, so. And, I mean, World War One so much worse than any war that came before it in terms of fucking with you. In terms of casualties and dehumanizing situations. Well, yeah, just like, you know, wartime before that, you saw the other guy... Eye to eye or whatever, feel, yeah. you know? But this was, it was mass guerrilla warfare. Just can't sleep, might be bombed, might be I gassed. Thought, I thought seeing a guy, if you're in a situation where you had to kill a lot of people up close, I think that'd be pretty bad, too. You feel like you have more control, though. Yeah, I mean, but like, I, I remember, if, like... If you're on the field of battle and you're opposing, you, you see your opponent. Yeah, but you like... Know, that's him over I, there. I remember not, in school, like, World War II guys... It's not a guy digging through the wall behind you and yeah. stab you in your sleep, you know? I remember in school, uh, guys talking about World War II guys. Like, World War II guys talking about uh, poking people with a bayonet. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and because it was up close. Like, can you imagine that? Poking a guy three feet in front of you instead of... I mean... You know, it's, it's, it's three feet away from you instead of just doing what we do. I'm sure none of it's pleasant, but... And these are Navy guys, of course. Like, the Navy guys are talking about, like, oh, my dad in World War One, he had to do this. That'd be, that'd be real terrible compared to what we had to do. What we have to do now. Yeah. But it's like the... I think it's all terrible. Except for yeah. what we do now, we just press a button. And that's terrible I mean, for them, but it's, you, you know. You still have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, dropping the bomb on Hiroshima was pushing a button. Yeah. But they still had seven guys that did it, and they didn't know which butt guy okay. pushed and the bomb. And they all got cancer, button. too. Well, and, I mean, even the guys that made the bomb never got over it, you know. Yeah. Oppenheimer and such. Yeah. But it's Bob still, Gajita. We're drifting. Like the barge. Yes, like the barge. Yeah, like the barge. Um, so <laughs> Campbell, as if I was a kid learning a lesson. <laughs> so Campbell knows that Mr. Moss is on the take. Yeah. And he gave an amazing speech. Sergeant Moss. Yeah. He, he always does. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to use you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you say? I'm going to do it basically effectively, but he says something else cooler. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm going to use you to your fullest Mercil extent. Mercilessly. Mercilessly, mercilessly that's yeah. it, yeah. Oh, man, so good. So good. I'm never going to look at Jurassic Park the same way again. I know. <laughs> and now when he's giving that speech to that kid with the raptor Fucking claw, raptors. it's going it's to look a lot different. Ellie, Not the dog locks. Hair. Hair. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around with that wolf cane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, I don't got a lot else to say. But yeah, we, good. They're like, I'm at the end of the last episode, there was like a big valley, and now they're starting to climb the mountain again. Like, everything's, yeah. you know, they're buying nice houses, there's a lot of gold yeah, going they're, around. They're investing in, in property and real it's estate. Like wave. <laughs> which is, which is a, uh, like a hard currency, you know, you invest it. Sure. And it's just there. Mm -hmm. Unless, you know, it gets burned down and you don't have insurance or something like that. You know, that's that's a good long-term investment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm most interested, I have to say, in Polly's storyline now. Yeah. Because I, 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 I don't know if, if Grace is going to come back up for a little bit, honestly. I, I'm Probably most won't. interested in what the assassination is going to be like, like that storyline. But yeah. the, the, the Polly stuff is interesting, too. And so is the Arthur stuff. There's a lot of intrigue. I don't care about Arthur. The Sabini's and <laughs> Solomon's. I'm over, what he, I'm over his shit, honestly. Yeah, but he can I fuck everything up. Is the thing. I want him yeah. to get better. Yeah, I don't want him to fuck things up. But I, I, I felt bad from the first. And I was like, man, again? Come on. I mean, it's, it's a continuing issue. Yeah. He's not getting any help for it. He's just drinking it away. And that's not going to help anything. I mean, the whole issue that Tommy was having in the first season was just coping with that. You know, yeah. he was he was managing partway. He found a grace to help him get over yeah. it. Yeah. Arthur's just killing kids. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching Season 2, Episode 2 of Peaky Blinders with us. Uh, if you want to see the next episode, you can right now. And you can see the full length of this episode right now. You go over there. If you like, subscribe, 
Go to twitch.tv slash blindwave to check our stream for this month, October. Scream stream! 5 and 30 seconds. I don't know. 20. 20.